Here's a technique that I like to use for analysis purposes. It's called curve analysis. Now, what I do to set this up so I can get a really good visualization of what's going across the surface from one boundary to the next is I set up a datum plane along an edge. My preference, I typically start out somewhere in the middle, say 50%. Now that I have that set, I'm simply going to go into my curve and I'm going to make an intersection. What am I going to intersect? Well, I'm going to intersect these tangent faces. What am I intersecting with? This datum plane. Now that I have my curve set, all I need to do is come in back into the Home tab and I'm going to select what's called curve analysis. I'm going to select my curve and what this does is it sets up curvature comb on that curve. Now this curvature comb tells me a lot about this shape. First you can see here, if I zoom in a little bit, you'll notice that the end comb on this and the end comb on this are parallel. This is telling me that this is tangent across this boundary. The other thing that this is telling me is that this is not curvature. If this were G2, then this envelope curve would touch this envelope curve. These needles represent curvature. Now, the tighter the curvature, you can see the taller the needle. The flatter, the shorter the needle. You have all sorts of options here. You can uh, needle scale and increase or decrease the size of the needle. You also have the number of needles. So you can increase that. If you reduce that too much, what ends up happening is the envelope curve, this curve across the top, begins looking a little jagged. So I like to go out and uh, make sure it's nice and smooth so I can really get a good visualization. Currently, I'm showing um, basically just the curvature comb. And I'm going to go in and say maximum. So on each one of these combs, it's showing me what the maximum curvature is. I can also show the minimum where that's located at. Something else that I can do is I can say radius of curvature. And the radius of curvature is going to give you the actual radius value at those positions. And you'll notice here, this is the hard radius value across the top. Now, other things that I can do, in this case, this may be a little difficult to read, is I can say max length. And what happens is the curvature comb is going to be basically chopped off, and I can reduce that length. And I know that it's chopped off because at each end of these points, I have a little, um, what looks like an actual point, hard point or an asterisk. This is signifying that these combs have been reduced in value, or, or not, I shouldn't say value, but in length. And it's just a visualization. It's just a clipping. So I can get something in this case. Maybe I want to represent this closer to what we have here. You can see this is a very large radius, 473. Over here, it's 638. Over here, it's 40. And again, because I'm showing radius of curvature, this is measuring the actual radius of that surface at that point. Other things that I can do with this, if I go into points, is I can create my peak points and I can also create my inflection points. Well, I don't really have any inflection points on here. There's no reversal of curvature, so I really won't see anything. I can show those points as well in my inflection points. And that'll occur here. You can see there is a uh, point and another point over here, another point over here. So I have multiple points. Now, under my settings, needle direction I have set to the outside. I can switch this around to the inside. Calculation mode, I can say radius of curvature. And for this, I'm going to have to increase this length. And it's pretty significant. I'm going to have to go out pretty far because the radius is fairly large. If I reach my maximum, I can come in here and enter in a value. and it'll adjust to that new value. If I turn off my maximum length, you can see here it's forever big because I'm measuring now the radius of curvature. And now I can reduce this needle scale, we'll say to one, for example, because I'm analyzing the opposite. This now drops down to a very, very small number. 
This is good for if you really want to analyze areas where it's bigger, broader, and flatter, but this also, again, gives you the true radius of the curvature at that point, not the curvature, which is basically the inverse value. Another thing that I can do for a scaling method is I can say logarithmic. So it takes and puts a logarithmic code across those values. So what ends up happening in this case, as you can see, that um, each one of these segments is being scaled uh, logarithmically based off of the other segment. So it gives you a much more um, reasonable representation for each one of those segments. And again, it makes it a little easier to read, whereas you may not need to use the maximum length. It's a great tool. And the reason why I like using it is when I select OK, if I come in now, here's my datum plane. If I modify the location on this, let's say over to here, that updates. You'll notice the points that I created do not update automatically. Those are basically dead points. They're not associative. So I once in a while I may pull a point off using the inflection or the peak point if I need to find a specific location but I'm using this more for analysis purposes and again the nice thing about this is when I drag and drop it boom my analysis is done I may set up two or three of these in the tree along that edge and it does a really nice job I have body that's hidden so if I show that if I come in here now and I double click on that plane I can modify the curve. I can deselect that and reselect this. Place it anywhere along that curve. And again, I, I typically start out in the middle and, and work my way back and forward. Hit OK. I expected the failure. Uh, what ends up happening is, is that failure is on the intersection curve because the intersection curve is intersecting these faces over here. If I select these faces, what you'll notice is that intersection curve is now able to be applied. Now that I have my intersection curve set, I can go back in there and you'll see, okay, my analysis has gone away. So I'll go ahead and drop my analysis back in on that. And I will increase the scale factor on the comb a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. You can see here, this is a tangent condition, but it's closer to curvature. As I get to this, you'll notice that it no longer just simply drops off and shoots up. This gets closer to a curvature continuity. This is not acceptable for exterior surfaces, something highly shiny and polished and, and such. This may be acceptable for an interior surface that has a bit of a grain that's going to be hidden away, things of that nature. So now, if I come in here and modify this datum plane and say, all right, I no longer want it on this curve, but I want it on this curve select OK, you'll notice everything updates and goes along. You also notice that this curl comb is now showing me a uh, comb that is um, uh, just truly tangent, no acceleration whatsoever. Now, if I were to do something along the lines, say in this case, this is an actual face blend. If I come in here, it modifies this face blend. I can tell this I want a uh, curve sim or curvature symmetric put in whatever values it is I want to put in. Let's see, force constant. I need to specify a spine curve. Uh, let's pick, you know what, I'll just pick this curve for now. There we go. It puts it in. And as you can see, my curvature comb now reaches up and touches this upper uh, other comb. This is a curvature continuous condition. It's not G3, this is just purely G2. And because it's not G3, again, this may be acceptable for an exterior surface, but it's definitely acceptable for an interior surface. But uh, chances are you may need to go in here and modify this blend some more to get uh, something that's far more acceptable. So here I may go up to, let's say, 0.8. And as you can see, 0.8 comes in, gives it a bit more of a peak. It's closer to G3, but it's not truly G3. Let me double click on that. Now, with this feature that I'm using, this face blend feature, I cannot truly mathematically give something a G3 constraint. I can get close. As I am here, it's getting close. I'm giving it acceleration, but this will never truly be G3. To show you what G3 is, let me just delete that feature. I'm going to go ahead and create 
a face blend. Let me do this before the intersection curve, so I'll make current feature. Instead of an actual face blend though, I'm gonna create what's called an aesthetic face blend. With the aesthetic face blend, I can use G3, which is flow. Let me reverse that. Reverse that. Let me increase the size. Select OK. Oops. Let me trim everything up and create it as a singular entity. Now I'll come back down to my intersection curve and make that my current feature. And let me modify my analysis, this curvature analysis. Pick the rest of these in this chain and select OK. And what you can see here, this is a G3 condition. As it crosses the boundary, you'll notice that this boundary comes in and is perfectly smooth. This is more acceptable for an exterior surface. Now, you may want to play around with this blend a little bit more to get this a little bit more accelerated, but um, for the most part, depending upon who you're talking to, this may be an acceptable condition. And again, I know I've talked a lot about uh, radius and analysis and tools, and I'll do some separate lectures on um, this actual curve analysis as well. If, if you guys ask for it. But uh, great tools, super powerful, great way to go in there and, and, and uh, do an analysis really quick, really easy, great way to verify what you're looking at is really what you're looking at, a great way to make sure that your blends and everything transition nice and clean. And again, if you want to, you can set up multiple planes. So if I go up to this datum plane and say, Oh, there it is, make current feature, I'm going blind. And I set up a couple more datums here. Come down here, make current feature. Let me fix this, this is bugging me. Let me go down to a 20. There we go. I will modify my intersection curve. And I'll add these in. And uh, because of the type of modification I put on there, it, there's a little bug in NX. So all I have to do is pick these again. And just like that, you have a really powerful parametric analysis tool to verify what your surfaces are look like. And this is, again, a really good visualization. Make sure that what you're building is what you want. So it's just simply a combination of an intersection curve, a datum plane, and using what's called curve analysis.